based on the messages that I get every single week. I know one of my favorite secret weapons is already saving passengers. I told it about hundreds of dollars, pounds or euros every single week. I'm positive the others will make as big a difference just as they did to the cruise that I'm on right now. If you don't know me, welcome aboard Holland America Osterdam. I'm Gary Bembridge. My first set of secret weapons are all things I use to save or use my money better on a cruise, starting with a quick word about the one I've already told some of you about before. It didn't actually help me on this trip, as I'll explain. Every single smart cruiser tracks their fares using an easy to use method. You can save big money. I got back $1,800 off an Azamara cruise last year when they cut fares below what I had paid. Now, after you book, fares will change based on demand. If the ship is filling up, fares go up. If it isn't, fares go down and the price falls. If the price falls, I always ask the line for the lower fare, extra onboard credits, or an upgrade and many times I will get it. I have a secret and simple weapon to track my fares. I use cruisewatch.com or cruiseline.com or cruisecritic.com. I have an article on how to set up all of these on my website, so check that out. It could be worth hundreds of dollars, pounds or euros to you. Now I did that for this particular cruise and actually saw fares had gone up versus what I paid, so nothing back this time, but it has worked on many others. So another secret weapon that's helped me tackle another big cost on this cruise and make many savings in the past is the following. I'm on a 14 night Honda America Osterdam cruise around South America. I saw before coming that the excursions would easily have added up to $1,500 to the trip per person because they range from $100 up to $300 each. So here's what I did instead. First of all, I looked at cruisetimetables.com. Like for every trip, I inputted this cruise to see how many ships would be in each port at the same time. Now, knowing this, helps me decide the very best thing to do in every port. Stay on the ship because it's going to be manically busy, self-explore because it's not going to be that crowded, or find an excursion that helps me avoid those crowds. Now on my last cruise, Regent Seven Seas Caribbean, looking at that made a huge difference knowing, for example, I saw in Barbados there would be six mega ships in and it was estimated that there would be between 15,000 and 20,000 cruise passengers in town. So I knew that many would head to places like Harbour Lights Beach area. So I chose an excursion which avoided those popular areas. Now on this trip, I could see only one small Viking or Saga ship would be in ports at the same time. So self-exploring or any excursions would actually be fine in this particular cruise. So knowing this, I then used probably one of my favorite weapons of all. It's also the least attractive looking of all those secret weapons, uh, but boy, is this one brilliant. It is called whatsinport.com and it covers every port of every size everywhere. It tells you about where the ship docks, the facilities, the watchouts, what to see and do, how to get there, the best sites, and they even have maps of the port area to download. I find it a gold mine for this trip. Uh, because other than Ushaya, I have not been to any of these ports. And from this, I discovered what I wanted to see, what uh, I needed to get an excursion for, and what I could actually do myself. So for example, based on their suggestions for Montevideo, I wanted to go to the Carnival Museum and Plaza de la Independencia. They showed that one was right at the port and the other was an easy walking distance. And so I could do it on my own and avoid a costly excursion that the line was offering. What'sImport.com is absolutely one of the most important weapons I use to get the most from a port, and it worked for me on this trip. Now, once I've looked at that, I then checked the cruise line excursions to see what they were offering. Now, on this Osterdam South America trip, What'sImport.com made it clear that some of the best sites were some distance away from where we were going to be docking and there wasn't very much going on in many of the ports. So in those ports, I looked at what the line offered, but before booking, as some were pricey, like the $350 trip I wanted to do in Punta Uranus, Chile, to Magdalena Island and the Penguin Reserve, I turned to another of my cost-saving weapons. And that is checking with two independent providers I've found so reliable over the years to see what they offered. Now, one is called VentureAshore.com 
and the other is called shoreexcursionsgroup.com. I just put in Holland America, selected Amsterdam and my departure date, and it gave me all of the excursions that they were offering in every single port. I found some many more diverse and niche excursions than through Holland America, ranging from, for example, an Argentinian cooking class run by a famous local chef in Buenos Aires to a heritage tour in Montevideo targeted at the Jewish community. Now, as an aside, here is another secret weapon I use in warmer climates like that Regent Caribbean trip I mentioned earlier. Now, I love beach and resort days on warm cruises. And so while cruise lines will sell those kind of excursions to beaches and resorts, resortpass.com has a bigger choice of resorts, better and fancier ones, and at much less cost. Now, for more money-saving secret weapons of mine, I want to talk about something most cruisers know about but don't know its power. I see smart cruisers use it in a very specific way. And that is Cruise Critic. I do not use Cruise Critic for the reviews. I use it for three other things. And again, for this trip, it was invaluable. First of all, it's an incredible way for getting answers to very specific questions about a cruise, a ship, or a cabin. Now, I'm often asked all sorts of questions that are very specific or perhaps very time sensitive, and it's impossible for me to know the answer to. Let me give an example. Lynn, who is going on a P&O UK cruise and is deaf, wanted to know about what they do in terms of adjusting the entertainment and what adjustments they have in the daily program activities for people that are hard of hearing. I, of course, didn't know the answer. Uh, she found p &O customer service didn't really know. So I suggested that she post that question in the Cruise Critic p &O forum. She got amazing information from some recent deaf travelers, for example. Another follower, Dave, he wanted to know if some very specific aft cabins on Carnival Mardi Gras were any good or suffered from noise and vibration. Now, I didn't know, but following my suggestion, he got the answer from people just back from a recent trip in those cabins by posting it in the Carnival Cruise Critic Forum. I've even seen others asking people on board to post daily programs of current cruises to see what activities and entertainment is like, for example, even on this Holland America trip. So that's the first thing I do. The second thing I use it for is the roll calls. Now, I joined the roll call for this trip and it's been packed with trips and more, particularly since I haven't been to this region before. So for example, people were clubbing together to arrange and share minibus transfers to the ship and saving a fortune. Now this trip required flying into Santiago, but the ship departs from Valparaiso, which is an hour and a half away. The Holland America transfer looked to me the cost over $200 per person. I was quoted over $300 by a private transfer company, but others found ways of coming together and getting cheaper options. Others were finding unusual excursions by the roll call because they had specific interests, bird watching or whatever. They found tours together. They found a guide to go together. I saw solo travelers in there connecting, getting to know each other's solos before the trip. So a really powerful tool. The third way that I use, which at the time of recording is on pause, but hopefully now is back on. It was a, it closed down because of a hangover from COVID restrictions but hopefully it's back, and that is the meet and the mingles. Now on the Cruise Critic meet and mingle page, you can normally sign up for a meetup which uh, is on your particular cruise, and many cruise lines will partner with Cruise Critic to run these at the start of the cruise. Now in the past, I've had some great ones where I've met people, uh, I've heard others making plans, getting tips and ideas on the ports from people who've been there before. So if those are available, Check and meet and mingles are very really powerful. Are you ready for another fantastic secret weapon for spending money better on a cruise? This one will cut that other big onboard cost, drinks. Now I see many passengers buying the drinks packages because they assume that they will save money versus buying drinks on the go ad hoc. You can be paying up to $60 plus per day per person and every adult in your cabin must buy the same drinks package on most lines. So on this 14-night Honda America cruise, the Elite Drinks Package, that's the best one, would add a staggering $1,680 to the bill per couple in a cabin. So I always use another easy to use, very nifty tool to see whether buying a drinks package on any cruise like this one is a good idea or not. There are two drinks package calculators that I use, either the one on cruiserly.com or the other ones on cruisemummy.co.uk. 
uh, you input the cruise line, then what you think you're going to drink on an average day, and it then will tell me whether it's worth buying a drinks package, which type or not at all. Now, even as a non-alcoholic drinker, I use these really clever little secret weapons to check whether it's worth even buying the soft drink or non-alcoholic package. If you found these weapons and tools interesting, watch this video of the top best tip and tricks that I've learned in my two decades of cruising to date, starting with the biggest mistake I see most cruisers make when choosing a cruise line. See you over there.